Hey there, everybody. Cindy Daychuck here with Queen Bee Creations. Thanks for joining me today. Um, so here's the thing. I just newly discovered that using your used dryer sheets is a thing. I didn't know. I've been throwing them out, wasting them all, this ye all these years, but they are a great fibrous kind of thing that you can incorporate into all kinds of projects. So we're gonna do a couple of those in particular. Um, one, I think I have a future video coming out where I use some of the, the, the pieces. Um, I'm planning to use some of the pieces. So all that I have are inexpensive watercolors. I have some wax paper down just because I'm gonna paint these up and they're very porous. <laughs> So the paint's going to go right through them. Um, in which case, I'm just anticipating that. So what I'm going to do is lay down some blue. Because I know for one of my projects, I'm going to want some blue. And there's a certain amount of resistance on these because they've got kind of that waxy, you know, kind of coating on them, whatever that fabric softener coating is. I can't, I don't know. Um, I'm just going to add like a darker blue now. I just want to have some, some variation happening. That's not a lot of variation. I'm just using watercolors because I have them and I'm using my inexpensive watercolors because I'm not doing anything fancy. There's no reason to use expensive watercolors. Um, but you could use uh, you know, watered down uh, tempera paints or, um, you know, acrylic paints. I mean, whatever, whatever you've got. I'm willing to bet food coloring would work for this. So, you know, you're just kind of, I, I'm just on this one trying to get some variations in colors happening here just so that I can use it in different ways, but I will go and do some sheets that are all green. I'll do some sheets that are all blue. Um, I think I'll do some orange and yellow sheets and maybe some purple and pink sheets. So just so you know, I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be using all, but uh, I'm thinking for maybe some projects I might need something like this. So it's all painted. It's pretty much done, but I have a lot of extra paint down here and I still have more sheets. So I'm gonna take a new sheet. I'm gonna rub that one in, turn this one in, and now I'm just gonna scrunch them together and use that cleaner one to dry off my surface area a little bit because I'm gonna be doing some others. And I'm just gonna squish them together. And so I have one that is more strongly colored. This one is a lot lighter. And it's maybe a little too light, but you know what I might do? Is just dab up some of my colors that I was using and uh, wet this up a little bit and then squish it. And there we go, it's colored too. So I am just gonna lay these out to, to dry. I'm actually gonna move them elsewhere so that I have room here. This is watercolor, so as much as I have it on my hands, it'll just wash off. And I'm gonna do up a bunch more. I have more sheets over here, um, fresh out of the laundry. They're a little slightly blue toned because they're with the blue jeans. Um, but I'm gonna get a bunch done up and then come back at ya and we're going to do some pictures with these. So hang in there. of my dryer sheets have dried now. I have a big 
walking jar of Mod Podge. You could use any glue or decoupage medium. Um, you can take white glue and just water it down a little bit, whatever works for you. What I have is a piece of um, watercolor paper, just because it's fairly thick and stiff, but you could use cardstock. You could do this on a board, on a canvas, on a piece of heavy duty cardboard, whatever you've got. I just have this down, I have it taped down. Now, one of the beauties of these dryer sheets is that we can kind of pull them apart and create all of these loose fibers. And that's what we're gonna play with. We're going to create a picture and I'm just gonna use I'm just using Mod Podge because I have it. You could use um, any watered down glue or decoupage medium of your choice. This goes on white, dries clear, and then it will also seal it on there. But we're just going to start laying some of these colors. So I'm looking at doing sort of a, uh, we'll do the purple stuff next. I'm just looking at kind of doing a scene, right? That I'll have some, some clouds and I'll have the green grass. This is my first time playing with this. So I was trying to make it easy on myself for a change, for a change. But you can see these fibers starting to look at, look at oh, I love the look of those those wispy edge fibers just drifting across. So let me get a little bit of glue down. I have all of the little speckles. I don't know if you guys can see that from breaking this apart over top of my piece. Um, all the little glue speckles have, have landed into my piece on top of the glue that was there. And I kind of, I kind of like it, which is good because they're pretty much permanent in there. Okay, let me. So we're just going to continue to do this, to lay down some of those colors and those fibers, which I just love. It's creating almost a wispy uh, watercolor effect almost because those, those wisps are kind of like what you would get with, with watercolors or at least people that know what they're doing with watercolors can get those wispy effects. But we can do this in a single layer. We can uh, fold elements over each other. We can lay more color down. Uh, you know, I'm trying to rip these apart not over my piece, so. The only thing that I'm trying to do is not have any really firm, hard edges. So wherever I have the straight edges from my dryer sheets. And you can see that already, like I haven't used a whole sheet yet. This just kind of builds. All right, so I have one brown. I'm just kind of tearing this apart into some pieces. You can see now why I wanted that kind of variegated look. I didn't want it all just one color green or one color brown or blue. I wanted some variations so that when we started doing this, we had a little bit of that happening. I 
I love where you see all those fibers just drifting out. I love that look. That's very cool. And I think that's the beauty of these little sheets and such a good way to use them up. So again, doing this on paintings, doing it for card making would be super cool. Um, making some, some really fun little cards. But I think also think of it from the standpoint of you could do this on glass jars and on, you know, maybe white painted tins to create a, a look. Don't, don't think that it has to just be on cardstock. And I think I've just about done this. I want to maybe wait and see what it looks like dry. And whether I want to add more layers to it. Because that's a possibility. Okay, I'm going to stop futzing with it. I'm going to let this dry overnight, and then we'll see what we've got. While we're waiting for our other project to dry, the other, the other quick thing that we can do with these, and this is why I did the, the purple ones, is that we can do... I'm just looking for better scissors, but we'll live with this is we can cut them and let's just fold this over and do a couple of circles oh, let me do it over this way more rectangular. Okay, you don't need to be perfect, which is a good thing, but we want to have a variety of sizes here. Do a couple. All right, so let's just scrunch these up a little bit so they're not quite as perfect. And then what we can do is make quick little flowers from them. Ooh, that was more glue than I need. So dot, let's get our medium ones in. another one and then maybe just one of these faux pearls they've got a flat back so in the very center and then these become I like them scrunched but these become little um, flowers that you could use to decorate just about anything. You know, if you were doing the outside of a junk journal, maybe you're doing um, little hair barrettes, right? And you wanna nestle a bunch of these flowers in there. And uh, maybe you wanna put them on a little stick. You want to do a whole um, little series of them, right? And you've got a little, little arrangement. 
They're just kind of cute to have on hand. You're doing a gift. They can decorate a gift package or even the envelope of a, of a gift card. So just again, another quick little something um, that you can do with some of your leftover bits and pieces or your colors. This you could also, um, as you cut out your circle, you could add glitter around the edges to be able to dress your flower or you know some metallics or some markers to be able to deepen some of it. So our pictures have had overnight to dry, but there's a couple of things that I just wanna talk about. I mean, I got to tell you, it's one of the best smelling crafts that I've done <laughs> in quite a while. Um, these little dryer sheets, the textures with them, with those fibers really lend themselves re so well to, um, you know, if you do any junk journaling or scrapbooking and, you know, you want to lay a little picture on top and you want to have those fibers sticking out, these have an awesome, awesome texture to them that is going to serve you really well. So I am never going to throw out another dryer sheet. <laughs> this was such a great learning experience from the standpoint of alternate uses of, of these to be able to um, build into other projects. So if you do junk journaling, if you do scrapbooking, definitely color up sheets of these in all kinds of different colors, whether you're using, um, you know, watercolors like I did, watered down acrylics, you're using food coloring, I don't care. But just have all kinds of sheets on hand in different color tones that you can just pull apart and use the little pieces and especially all those little feathery bits in some of your projects. Tag making, these would be super sweet. Anything like that, I think that these are awesome to be able to use. So. I'm, I'm happy that I did a number of them so that I have them for other future projects. Now, the one project that we worked on together was um, using it to kind of create a picture. Now, what's really cool about this is all of the texture that you get just by virtue of um, those dryer sheets themselves. I used, I, you know what? I didn't stop and think about it. This decoupage medium was um, a gloss. I think I would like it in a matte better, um, just for the purposes of like a picture. You know, if I was doing a picture, I was gonna frame it. Um, I don't have any problems if I'm going to fold this over and use it as a book cover. Certainly for doing tags, textured tags or textured cards. Um, this is this is great and so much fun and you can see how well it layers over top of itself. The other piece that I experimented with off camera was I had a piece of watercolor paper that I had watercolored um, and it was awful. <laughs> it was not a good watercolor at all but what I did do was layer some of the the green kind of it pulled into the shape of leaves and then little pieces of that kind of purpley pink to do some little flowers in there. And I love that layered technique, like doing it layered over top of a color wash um, and having that happen, that's so cool. I mean, this is gonna be, this one I'm gonna cut down into bookmarks. I think is gonna be really lovely. And then the decomposition, of course, makes it very stiff and very rugged. So, Definitely, definitely, um, this is something that I would do again and I would use in future projects for sure, especially now that I have more of an idea of how it works together. I think that there are a lot of possibilities on how to be able to use this. And um, again, zero waste, right? We're using something, but I think it's the textural element that makes this so cool. And um, if you were looking at, you know, kind of accordion pleating this up and turning it around and doing a bunch of those, you could make some really cool and awesome flowers as well. I mean, we cut the rounds and we did that flower, but I think that there's a lot of other possibilities 
on how to be able to make a flower that you could use these sheets for as well. Um, just even, you know, wrapping and starting to create some, some roses and things. They'd be a lot of fun as well. And then doing the multiple colors on the sheets just gives you some of that var variegation, variation um, as you're doing that. So this was a lot of fun. I can definitely see future projects using this. I'm quite happy with the ones I did. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be keeping different colors of these on hand that you're gonna see me pull out in future projects that we do just to start to, you know, create that textural element in it, that, that textural under layer. This was, this was cool. Let me know if you're gonna give this one a try. Let me know if you're now hoarding and saving all your dryer sheets. <laughs> There's a use for everything, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Looking forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, take care.